you can still start fresh. If not, you will face my type of punishment pleasure. The last part of 2017 was the end of an era. When I finally said no more to the police, judges, and government officials trying to railroad me for standing up to their corruption. I said, I'm not showing up for court. You're not going to do to me what you did to Schaefer Cox. You're not going to do to me what you did to Jeff Winehouse and to Leonard Peltier and to so many that have been killed and sent to prison since then for standing up to the U.S. criminal government and its thuggish enforcers called police. And I loaded up my family and my trailer and everybody, and I crossed the border into Mexico. And I remember so vividly those days, just roaming around for months, trying to get my feet under me and figure out what was what. And there's a lot of warm memories from those days, even though there were some crazy moments. The statists and the government officials and the corrupt officials of Grant County and the Pat Kennedys, they hated it that I left. They hated it that I was able to say, no, I won't tolerate anymore. That I came to Mexico and was giving official refugee protection status from the United States of America. And yeah, there's a video about that on this channel. Fast forward to this TikTok short video era. It brings out the worst of us. TikTok and these short videos are hands down the worst thing that digital and media production in my opinion, has ever brought us. They play to our ignorance, to our lynch mob mentality. They play to our impatience, to our lust, and our pure desire to be satisfied right now. TikTok even will listen to the microphone on your phone to the way you laugh and respond so they can manipulate the algorithm to get what they want from you. So surprise, surprise, when people come and steal videos off my YouTube channel, add some text and some sensationalism, often downright lies, and put up a video that plays to an audience that is ignorant and that thrives on hurting other people, that plays to our basest desire to troll, to mock people. This has happened numerous times, but this week they stole this video. Let me put on the original video, just a little bit of it, so you can see what happened as we were driving in Mexico in the van, returning from a weekend trip and went through this illegal toll booth and simply gently pushed through like I always did. Because when I entered the country, this is what the people told me to do with these toll booths. You can see me pushing aside the gate. Then you hear the window break. Give me that camera. Give me that camera. Who is in muy trouble, senor? And here's where they love it. This is what they love to mock. They shattered the window. Now, mi niños is in the car all. Two number it, ahora. Will you guys get them out? They should be okay. Yeah. That's right, I broke off the stupid bar. And no, I'm not ashamed of it. Because if everybody did that to these ridiculous little twerps trying to steal money from people on the highways and pretending that it's official and legal and it's the government maintaining the roads and lying to people about it, but lots of people in Mexico know better than this. And that's why there's been so much resistance. These aren't police. These guys have no authority. These are just little punks who didn't like it that I rolled through their little toll booth extortion scam. They slammed the bar back and broke the window, terrorizing my children and causing chaos and damaging my vehicle. So yeah, I was admittedly pissed. Now, if you have a pair of bowls, like my friend Stephen Ruth in New York, you know that when you get in a situation where things get tense, sometimes you're not as focused and you don't articulate yourself as well as you want to. I'm usually pretty good at that because I've been doing activism for quite a few years and I tend to be pretty focused. I don't lose my temper and lose control. And I didn't hear either, but I was angry. And my wife, of course, was also pissed because when you hurt the kids, you hurt her. The problem is I've been in Mexico for a few months. So people always make tons of fun of the fact that I say, tour is in muy trouble, senor, because in that moment of adrenaline, 
my Spanish, which was barely there in the first place because I knew no Spanish when I entered Mexico and crossed that border, I barely knew how to form the conjugations and the words and the different contexts, much less when I was angry. I yelled at them, I expressed my anger, and I broke the dumb bar off so that the next car that came along, they couldn't put a bar in their way. And I know that gringos and our style tends to be a little aggressive to the culture here. And I've tried to learn that over the years and learn to be calm and learn to, even when doing activism, consider the culture and the norms here because the activists here tend to be very polite, but they can also be very firm. That said, when the government really crosses the line here and the activists get really mad and the people get really mad, they go far further than a little yelling. We're talking throwing rocks, fruit bottles, chasing the military and the police out of town because here, this mindless worship of the military and police that you see in these posers of these comments on the TikTok videos I'm about to show you has nothing to do with how people actually act or think now, this has happened numerous times with various videos where they just try to capitalize off my videos by oftentimes putting downright lies in the video saying I'm at an international border crossing when I'm actually just in an illegal checkpoint on the roadway. Short form videos for ignorant people to get a mob mentality response out of them, to get them to troll, to get them to make threats, and most of all, to get views for the losers that are making these fake videos. I always know when it's happening because I start getting tons of hate-filled and troll-filled comments and threats like you see here. Entitled disrespector tourist destroys a toll booth in Mexico. Wow, it's amazing how we can take like breaking the little bar off that was blocking my path to destroying a toll booth. The next little poser here was a little more clever. He came in and added a narrative to try to sway the audience even more against me by making stuff up along the way. Well, this video can... is of Gavin Sign. It's a white dude living in Mexico who's refusing to a bare minimum like paying for toll. Why is the fact that I'm a white dude relevant exactly to this? I feel like if that's the pretext of the whole conversation, we've started off on the wrong foot, bro. Why? Take the video, they speed it up, they make cartoonish things out of it. They do whatever they can do to play to that algorithm of TikTok that's gonna play to the viewers and get people to respond. This dude literally has a whole Wikipedia page dedicated to how terrible he is. Now he's in Mexico to avoid charges for an altercation he had with a police officer. So we're not certain if the Mexican government actually gave this guy refugee status because it's something he's claiming. Yeah, we're certain. I've showed you all that in my videos. But the thing is, these people don't bother to do research and the people leaving the comments do even less. Remember, the goal is to play to our base instincts. The goal is to give us a pleasure response of anger. Feeling like we've done something by going and leaving a mean, hateful comment, by going and trolling someone else, not to actually educate us. This is why I think these kind of videos for our kids and even for us adults are the worst of the worst. They can transform the way you think with propaganda, with woke nonsense, with government worshiping fascism, because it's repeated. And as soon as the algorithm finds what you respond to, even if you don't realize it, and even if you don't realize that it may take you down that path, it's going to show you more and more and more. When you watch a long form YouTube video, you're generally thinking more in terms of facts, data, and then you can research from there. The short form videos don't allow you to do that. They punch into your eyeballs, they feed your pleasure response in some way, and then you move on to the next similar video. And in the Wikipedia page, they actually have a quote from a US ambassador calling Syme a spoiled brat, an example of an ugly American who only follows the laws that he wants to. For the record, the US ambassador is a spoiled brat and his fascist tactics didn't work for me. I want myself and you and my kids to stand up for our rights, regardless of where they're at. And I actually know my rights. I know the constitution of the US and I know the constitution of Mexico when it comes to my rights as well. And so the commenters are usually so ignorant that they're like, you're not in the US anymore. The constitution doesn't apply. And I'm like, bro, Mexico also has a constitution. I hate to break it to you. Ignorance has become wisdom in this current day. We don't love our neighbor. We don't act like Jesus. We don't care about other people. And I'm not just talking about the left. The right does this in the same way 
but against the other side. We have become childish lynch mobs that only want to be gratified right now. It's people without honesty and character that will take videos simply for his own profit and gain, simply to get views and likes and make money. For the record, despite the fact that Wikipedia is often very biased, it, it doesn't actually make me out to be a very terrible person, I don't think. You can go read my, my Wikipedia. <laughs> But let's come back to the spoiled little thugs that think they're special because they can cover their face and avoid the camera and because they have a uniform, even though they're not cops and they don't have any authority. And they're usually young guys who kind of want to pick a fight and want to be aggressive. And that's intentional. They're not actually law enforcement or authority or police. They're just there to try and intimidate people to pay the tolls. It's important to understand that I didn't come up with the idea of not paying tolls. These tolls often are outrageous. In certain areas of the country, one toll booth can be two days wages for somebody. That's absolutely outrageous in a country of so many poor people where they're already paying through the nose through a gas tax. But that's not the worst of why these tolls are illegal. These tolls were actually put up as contracts to build an interstate system. The libres or the free roads are more like highways. And in most areas, they're fine. A lot of times they're a much nicer drive. They go through nice towns and things like that. And I enjoy them most of the time. And they're normally not unsafe. That said, they are oftentimes quite a bit slower, particularly if you're in the mountains or something like that. The quotas or toll roads are more or less the interstates. They tend to be very badly maintained because the money that they're taking from people at these tolls, most of it's not going to fix the roads. It's going into the pockets of the people running the tolls. And those aren't actually the government. You see, when they first built these roads, I think it was a 20 year agreement with these tolls to put them in and pay for these roads here in Mexico. And the people agreed to that and that time passed and they kept collecting the tolls. But the government was so incompetent at it and it wasn't working out that eventually they sold off the concessions, the politicians sold off the concessions of these tolls to their buddies. And now they're run by private people who didn't build the roads, who don't own the roads in any way, and most of the money goes in the pockets of these people and their politician friends. So what's actually happening with the tolls is not a way to bring better roads to Mexico. It's a massive graft and abuse scam to take money from the people and from the poor. You might spend as much and a toll as you will in your vacation to the beach because you'll be going through 10 or 12 of these toll booths run by different political friends, all with their little private hired thugs to intimidate people so they pay. And yet still a massive amount of Mexicanos don't fall for this. The reason I started running these tolls, it wasn't to be an activist. They asked me to. When we first came into Mexico, and I remember those first days, I remember coming to those first toll booths and activists having taken over. That's right, and I've been there with them before when they did it, they took me with them one day to observe. They show up with people, not with violence. They tell the people running the toll booths to get out of the way. They open all of the bars and they stay there for the afternoon, waving everybody through and saving them that money. And they pass out flyers like this one actually. And what it's saying is you have a right protected by the constitution to travel. These tolls are not legal. You do not have to pay these. It's not the law that you have to pay these. And you can just push the bar out of the way. It won't damage your vehicle and you can pass through. I wasn't out doing activism. I was coming home from a weekend trip, pushing through a toll bar like I had done many dozens of times before to not be extorted at a toll, to do my duty trying to not only teach my kids freedom, but to support the Mexicanos in their activism because it was them that taught me and asked me not to pay the tolls. Friends like Ramon, friends like all these people here. And so you can see they're going up and just waving people through. And, uh... <laughs> and the people are very happy about this. And yeah, when I was there observing, they called in like 50 police to try and intimidate the activists to leave because this toll was losing massive amounts of money. It was a major extortion scam. And 
They didn't. They opened the gates and they flagged th people through. And you can see those truckers and people driving through happy to have a day free of having to fight and be extorted by these stupid holes. What happened here is these little punks grabbed that bar and intentionally slammed it into the side of the window. I was just driving like I normally did and exercising my simple right to not be extorted at a toll that is not a government toll that is not a legal toll and that is simply extorting people. Oftentimes I'll actually get on the tail of a semi truck and just follow through so I don't even have to push the bar so I don't give them time to respond. I'll try to pick a toll where there's no one standing at it so that I can smoothly go through with the group that I'm with without problems, without damage to my vehicle. The only people that committed a crime was these little thugs that assaulted me and my vehicle and my children. And in light of that, I think my response was very controlled and calm. My Spanish is a lot better now, and I wouldn't look near as silly in this situation as I did. I've explained this many times on this channel. The people that want to be ignorant and send me messages like these ones will be. I left the USA because I was standing up to corruption and I needed to get out to avoid ending up in a cell like so many of my brothers and sisters and other people that have been locked away for defending their rights. And I still try to speak out for them. That's the reason I was given official refugee status here in Mexico. When you look at these comments, it's interesting because people say you're a criminal while they're actually breaking international law, Mexican law, US law, sending threats, trying to intimidate me. You gotta love the fake accounts, but you have to love even more when they actually send their threats from their email address unfiltered that has their business name. I mean, this is my favorite. This is actually how smart these people are. I've just now been told about how you've been treating my people in Mexico and how you've been thinking you are way above the law and everyone else. I'm going to have people all around. I'm posting pictures and other things of you, sending them out on WhatsApp. And once someone tells me they have seen you, I'll come for you. You are not my first and last person or family I've come for. Think about what you really want to do. Say, stay or suffer for days and weeks or go somewhere else that is not Mexico. Do these, do, do people that make threats learn, like use a grammar checker or anything or do they just like send it from their iPhone? Start fresh. You can still start fresh. If not, you will face my type of punishment pleasure. If not, you will face my punishment pleasure. Welcome to the punishment pleasure house. Do these things worry me? I mean, not a ton. I try to love my neighbor and, and have faith and just care about other people and go day to day trying to stand up to the best of my ability for what's right. I'm not perfect at it. But I do partly document things like this so that if something does happen, you guys have the evidence here. You can see the names. You can see the people who pushed it and who caused it. It's absolutely crazy. The hate and the denial and the lies and the manipulation and deception that people invent so I keep switching to Spanish, that people invent solo por vistas just, just to get views and that people fall for just to entertain their small, narrow-minded ignorance. Don't be like these guys. Be free. Be safe.